Hello, my name is Mary D, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Mary D Plays. In this video, I'm just going to take a break from playing on the instruments and do some uh, studying on this book, or uh, in this book called Music Theory for the Music Industry, a Practical Guide to Learning the National Number System. And it was written by Jeffrey Conde. Um, if you go on my YouTube channel, there's actually a playlist of other vi similar videos where I'm reading from this book that I've done so far. Anyways, I've already read a few chapters. I've read uh, half steps, whole steps in the major scale key signatures. And the last uh, chapter I read was building chords and signing chord numbers. Today, I'm going to read about inversions. And that's on page 10. So we're going to scroll down until we find inversions. Yeah, okay, we have key signatures. And going through that, da, da, da. building the chord. Getting close. Um, I think that's the invert inversions right there. Oh, maybe not. I think I've got to read, read this part. Okay, so yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, in my last video, I didn't get down this far. I thought this was part of another chapter. So this was actually part of the previous chapter about building chords. So I'll go ahead and read that and then we'll read the chapter about inversions. The seldom used seventh chord and the major minor chords define. The seventh chord is a strange chord in modern music. Let's build it and find out why. Begin on B, the seventh note of the C major scale, and move up two steps to D. Notice that those two steps were a half followed by a whole. If we moved up two more steps according to the C scale, we end at F. Completing the seventh chord. That's B, G, and F. Is the notes that make up that chord. For those last two steps, we used a whole followed by a half step. It's important to realize that for minor triads, the distance from the root to the third is three total half steps, and the distance from the third to the fifth is four half steps. Um, conversely, for major chords, the, <clears throat> the distance from the root to the third is four total half steps, and the distance from the third to the fifth is that same chord, is three half steps. These are the definitions of a major and minor chord. However, note the seventh chord. The root to the third tick three half steps and the third to the fifth tick three half steps resign in a shorter chord that is neither major or minor by definition. We call this chord diminished. Go ahead and play it and see how it sounds. I don't have my instrument with me, but I will. Notice it doesn't have the major or minor um, resonance. This chord is seldom used in the natural number system. Having built the seven chords used in the natural number system, it's important now that we reiterate, reiterate, iterate, iterate. I know what the word is. I'm just trying to pronounce it. I have a speech impairment, so sometimes I have trouble pronouncing the words. Reiterate. Reiterate, reiterate. Uh, a roll, I, I gave up. Chord number always have the same major, minor, or diminish value. Because we stick to the major scale when building chords, the distance between the root, third, and fifth of the chord will always be the same for each numbered chord in any key center. For instance, the one chord is always major, the second chord is always minor, and the third chord is always minor. The fourth chord is always major, the fifth chord is always major, 
the sixth chord is always minor and the seventh chord is always diminished. It's critical that you commit this to memory. Ugh, I don't know. It's something that I have to learn. Okay, now next chapter is inversions. Any of these chords can be played in inversions. An inversion of chord changes the order of the note being played. For instance, the C major chord doesn't have to be played as C, E, or G, but can be rearranged to be played as E, G, C, or G, C, E, or C, E, G. Notes are the DNA of the C major chord. So if I played a chord, E, G, C, I'm still playing a C major chord, just in an inversion. The common triad, triad arrangements are called root position, first inversion, and second inversion. Root position chords are stacked in a way that I explained, uh, the one through six chords. The root being on bottom, the third in the middle, and the fifth as the highest note. First inversion chords use the third as the bottom note, the fifth as the middle note, and the root as the highest note. The G major chord in first inversion in the key of C major. Second inversion chords are the fifth at the bottom note, the root as the middle note, and the third as the highest note. G major chord in second inversion of the C major scale. The G major chord played in any of these arrangements is still called a G major scale. So it, is, so it is with all the triads and all key signatures, inversions can take a long time to recognize accurately and be comfortable with. I'm still working on that. Here's a worksheet to help you get started. Don't feel frustrated if you don't do very well. I recommend grabbing your instrument and playing these notes in different orders until you find the root position of the invert chord that is written. From there, it will be easier to figure out what inversion the chord is in. And I'm going to assume the next part is the worksheet, which I'll do in the next video.